two yeah. with uh, roll call, please. Councilman O'Malley? Councilman Bosco? Here. Councilman Crowley? Councilman Edgar? Here. Councilman Hall? Mayor Copeland? Here. Councilman Pinto? Here. Councilman Lee? Here. Councilman Mangini? Here. Deputy Mayor Nelson? Here. Councilman Stout? Here. I will. Other people are out. Good boy. All right, uh, first item on the agenda is discussion resolution, resolution approving Rare Hospitality, Inc. as the operator of the Longhorn Steakhouse. Whereas on August 18, 2060, Town of Enfield sold the property known as BR1 in the Enfield Memorial Industrial Park, known as the property, to Enfield Lodging, LLC, and on August 18, 2006. The town of Enfield, the Enfield Development Agency, and the Enfield Lodging LLC executed a declaration of restrictive covenants regarding the property. And whereas Enfield Lodging LLC has constructed the Hampton Inn on the property, whereas Enfield Lodging LLC desires to construct a Longhorn Steakhouse on the property, and whereas paragraph three of the declaration of restrictive covenants requires that Enfield Lodging LLC obtain the town's approval for the proposed restaurant operator. And whereas Rare Hospitality Inc. will be the operator of the Longhorn Steakhouse on the property. Now therefore be it resolved that the Rare Hospitality Inc. is hereby granted approval to operate the Longhorn Steakhouse on the property and be it further resolved. What are you laughing about? Sidebar. I thought maybe it was because of rare and state. Oh, that's oh, good, go. yeah. Be it further resolved that the town manager is hereby authorized to sign the attached approval letter. So moved. By Second. Deputy Mayor Nelson, seconded by Councilman Mangini. Any words of wisdom on this? I, uh, I only have to say that uh, after, after <laughs> many, many a moon, um, we finally have a restaurant going into a, a place uh, as council that were at least with us way back when um, council uh, rode into the uh, the sale of the land for this that uh, you would have the ability to approve the restaurant that would go in there that it would be a sit down <coughs> type restaurant that uh, would bring value to the rest of the community. We had a false start a few years ago. Longhorn is back, and uh, I believe they've gotten all their approvals through the uh, planning and zoning, and uh, I appreciate you entertaining it tonight, uh, but they are ready to start building, and we wanted to get going. Any discussion? Deputy Mayor Nelson. Just, I, I approve this, or I support this. Suppose, suppose Longhorn goes three years and they leave. The next restaurant coming in, will they also have to come forward? Yeah, I believe, uh, that's a good question. Yeah, I believe that, yes. I kind of go back to 2007. <coughs> I believe that we drafted it that it was forever. Forever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If it wasn't a one time approval, then you can so do whatever you want after that. Right. It's on the D. Okay. Let's I'll double check that. <coughs> sure Thank you. Uh, Councilman Mann. Yeah, I just have one question. Thank you. Um, Matt, did you say they've already gone through planning and zoning? Yes. Yep. So, really, we just need to approve the resolution. Yep. Anything further? So, um, I shall say, well done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, uh, well done. It's a rare opportunity <laughs> to have a steakhouse come to Enfield. Do we vote now on it or Monday? They won't tell them What's that? <laughs> We're voting on it tonight. Okay. And, uh, so we can tomorrow down? morning give them the go ahead prime, and they can a prime, stake out their land. A, they can stake out their land. <laughs> a prime, a steak prime. and eggs for Saturday morning breakfast. It's good to see they work colorized <coughs> products. Now let's get on with this before they get even hornier. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a beef with them at all. Too late. <laughs> You're just kowtowing to the rest of the Kowtowing to the rest of the people. Mayor, you really need to steer I this back. Saved the, I could have saved you the trouble. I went to my medium today, and she told me it would go right through. Um, any further discussion? For the door I think it's a great, first of all, seriously. It's I a prime restaurant. It's a prime restaurant. It's a great addition. And uh, there's a reason there? why we had the covenant on BR1. We wanted to make sure that it was a proper restaurant that attracted folks and compliment at the uh, hotel and the industrial park. That's no bull. That's no bull. Well done. Sensing no other discussion. No other Roll call, please. Councilman Bosco. Four. Councilman Edgar. Four. Mayor Colton. Four. Councilman Pinsley. Four. 
Councilman Lee. Four. Councilman Manchin. Four. Four. I guess we could go four, four, four. What was that? We could put a four in this part. I was thinking, I was trying to come up with a different affirmative word. You were going to moo when that was I was going to moo, but I'm like, yeah. You read my mind. I was like, <laughs> all right. It must yeah, be budget move. time. Oh, we're yes. antsy. We're punchy already. All right. Budget hearing. Uh, first. Department <coughs> on the deck. Information technology. Right. Hello, Mr. Russell. Hello. How's it going? Oh, I'm fine. How are you? Good, thank you. So, uh, hi, Cindy. You want to join Mr. Russell or is he all set? I think she's here to heckle. She's here to heckle. <laughs> so she's here as a resident. Okay. 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 Um, again, uh, the prim primary services that the uh, <laughs> He's in it too. That the <laughs> <laughs> yes, wow. that the uh, information technology call. department is is uh, again our, our mission is to provide uh, highly secure, highly available, and open access to information for appropriate uh, use uh, to better and and make improve government and education services uh, through the uses of technology. Our Organization chart is we're made up of uh, 15 uh, representatives. Uh, myself, the chief technology officer. We have a project coordinator, as well as a uh, pr uh, project manager. The, these two positions are key as as things are changing and new uh, technologies are becoming available. They help us um, implement and keep things on track and within budget. Um, our technical staff, the desktop support services, that's for all the computers and devices that uh, all the employees, students, <coughs> and teachers, administrators use throughout the town. This, this helps uh, this group, keeps 3,200 plus devices that are part of our uh, network up and running and making sure that they're up to date with their patches and working properly for operations. Our next group is the customer services group. Uh, which is an area where we have uh, we've really focused more on bringing in uh, a service attitude from our help desk. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later and kind of the, the technique that we put in place for servicing uh, uh, requests from our, uh, from our customers. Uh, we have a systems analyst that is key in providing uh, foresight and uses of our main uh, information system from Munis. We also have a webmaster, which again is our primary footprint for uh, allowing information out on the internet about our organization and um, and keeping communications through the community uh, uh, based upon um, web web browsing for the, for the individuals. Uh, our network is our infrastructure. Uh, this is uh, all the stuff behind the walls where it allows the communications between devices. This. Uh, the file storage, the um, the email system, er everything that is is behind the walls is where our network team is made up of, and we have uh, three individuals that are in charge of that area. Our 2013-14 objectives are to implement a work order solution, uh, inventory control for DPW, EMS, and IT. We're and uh, we will be implementing, we're in the process of starting to uh, build um, processes and improve processes using the MUNIS uh, work orders and inventory management control. We, we envision this helping us to streamline services from the request to the completion for all aspects of the Department of Public Works as well as IT and uh, EMS is going to take advantage of the inventory control system. This will allow us to no longer have to just purchase large, large amounts of inventory, but we'll be able to track those and, and integrate with the finance system so that we can do more of a just-in-time ordering instead of a bulk ordering. Again, saving space is one of the key areas, but also uh, not having to overspend uh, you know, for guesswork. We'll, we'll be able to have better control over our inventory. Uh, we look to continue reducing 
our operational expenses through standardization of technologies and bringing in centralized management solutions so that uh, we can take take advantage of our network and not have to add additional people to support such large you know numbers of devices and as we continue to roll out wireless there's a, a magnitude of unmanaged devices that we have coming onto our network uh, <clears throat> since we uh, rolled out the new network uh, we were able to see exactly how many devices that we've had a, a different unique devices attached to our network since January and since January we just broke the 11,000 mark hmm. of devices that have been on our network that have unique identifiers they're called MAC addresses that we've registered so between residents students employees visitors uh, when they grab a hold of our wireless network we, we transition them to the proper access whether it's going through uh, internet or it could be accessing resources on our network uh, we're, lo we're looking to establish the IT support for North Thompsonville Fire Department we we provide support now for the other four fire uh, districts and uh, North Thompsonville is, is the next on the list this will help us uh, particularly uh, as we look to do the site uh, the site plans for buildings uh, so when they respond to uh, fire they'll, they'll be able to pull up site plans regardless of what district you're in but for um, for the uh, the fire truck so again giving them more information when they're responding to calls and this will help along those those areas um, another request that we're looking to do is refresh technology <coughs> for the teachers and the elementary labs last year um, there was a decision made to purchase the laptops those laptops uh, kind of as we suspected are are failing at a large rate they you know those la the teacher laptops that were purchased uh, when we originally decided to do the process was to put on an operational lease and replace those laptops every three years we're in year four now and we're really uh, finding that they are failing at a large rate to the point where we don't have spares right now so we're creeping along so uh, the plan is to certainly replace those laptops uh, and also the elementary labs the primary elementary labs the k through two schools n were when the reorg happened weren't really taken care of as far as technology because it wasn't seen as a necessity at that young age but as we continue forward and we see the benefits of technology uh, the education side is really um, the, those devices are 10 years plus older so we really need to replace those and those are failing on a large rate so as we look at the desktop support services that we have of four people with these old this older equipment and not part of our standard platform it really becomes overbearing to be able to support such an older PC or desktop population that we really have to focus back on getting into some sort of standard uh, process and by by doing uh, implementing the stoneware project uh, we're able to do that allow for multitude of different devices to come over onto one access point allows allows for us to be able to do that central management so we're not not worried about so many end devices but um, th those labs are, are very old in the <laughs> primary elementary schools and coordinate departmental efficiency we've we've taken on several projects process improvements uh, one that we've done in IT we uh, we had a sense that we were um, not performing as we should as well as we could with uh, service requests coming in we did a we did a, uh, a survey um, our turnaround time for requests was averaging around four and a half to five business days uh, depending on those requests it could be new requests or it could be break fix um, we put in a, a solution that uh, goes to a service desk model where I've aligned people up front to take the calls as they come in before it was emails would come in sit in a queue and they get get assigned as a as a resource was available now we're looking at those up front kind of doing a level one triage of those of those requests and either solving them immediately right on the phone or as they get into the queue um, and then we're resolving 70 percent of them on that first call or first first indication which is which is great instead of waiting for people to come back to it so we were able to turn that uh, four plus day turnaround time to just under a day and a half now so it, the, same amount of people just redirecting them in a process 
uh, we've been able to provide better <coughs> customer services uh, for for the employees that use our technology. The the, uh, the changes in our operations. We're going to continue converting to our service desk operations uh, since it's such it it's really has paid off benefits for our our customers that use our technologies to when they put in the request they can they can pretty much be sure that we're going to get their request on a break fix resolved within that day, um, which is again a, a, a great a significant. Uh, improvement for operations because the length of time that they're without those services is the length of time that they're not ba not able to take advantage of the technologies. Our 2014 budget breakdown uh, <coughs> salaries are a little over 992,000. <clears> the uh, benefits are 376,000. Uh, professional technical services are a million fifty-three thousand. Other purchase services are 511,000. These are telecom services uh, primarily in that area. Uh, professional technical are all our software licensing, uh, uh, consulting services, and mostly the, the licensing. This is where uh, we, we, our bulk of uh, expenses are. Uh, supplies and materials, uh, 10,940. We had an increase on uh, the cost of gas as uh, there's been a new direction as far as reallocating using the town, the town provided cars and paying for the gasoline and uh, you know in our vehicles, um, and that that went up significantly <coughs> from what we had last year. Uh, technology equipment we've added uh, two leases. One was for the board of ed, replacing the teacher devices and the uh, elementary labs, and then also with the testing requirements, we added an additional line item of fifty five thousand to cover any technology needs that we need for the statewide testing that's coming down the road. Um, again, not really knowing what, the, what that is going to be needed, um, we just know that we didn't have the technology available for the, the third through, um, the third grade students through eighth grade students to be able to take these tests, especially all throughout that time frame. Um, they're looking at 1,800 students getting access to computerized and internet access throughout this testing phase and we certainly didn't have the available equipment for that. Uh, and the total budget is four million forty four thousand dollars. Some of the deviations from our 2013 budget, the technology equipment is $168,000 uh, above what we had for 2013. Uh, telecom is up $132,000 from last year, and a lot of that is to provide additional internet access uh, for the schools. Uh, they have one internet pipe right now that's provided by CEN, again, to handle the, the bandwidth requirements of the, of the devices and the requirements to get out to the internet now uh, are much larger and, uh, and, and more expensive, obviously, but uh, um, it, it's roughly uh, $132,000 uh, increase. Technology services have increased uh, by $58,000, and we have a reduction in personal services of $92,000. Um, and again, from salaries and benefits, uh, we've had some attrition that we haven't refilled those positions. So we went from uh, 17 down to 15 right now. <coughs> Some of the additional kind of descriptions, it, again, uh, the largest component of the equipment increase was definitely due to the adding of a three-year lease for 900 computers or devices. And again, not knowing what, what the direction for the technology is gonna be for the Board of Ed. Uh, we, you know, we know there's 900 devices that are aged and need replacement. Not sure what, what, that, um, what those uh, end devices are going to look like. Telecommunication increases are due to increased bandwidth requirements for, for internet access for school devices, the iPads, Apple TV, educational video websites that are now being very prevalently used for education, which is great, um, but we need to increase the bandwidth uh, capabilities of it, as well as the district-wide testing that's coming next year. It's coming pretty fast and furious. 
<coughs> additional cellular costs for mobile devices, smartphones, tablets. Uh, we've gone away from the Blackberries and the Sprints. Uh, Sprint services are poor, um, and using the Blackberries, the Blackberry devices, those are no longer acceptable. So as we migrate to smartphone devices outside of the Blackberries, the costs have increased, uh, and that's where we'll see uh, you know a, a bump in our, our our cellular costs for that. Technology services increased are from. Increased licenses for data force for public safety, mobile use, the police department, the fire departments, and EMS all access the data force system remotely from their vehicles, and there's been an additional licensing added to that. Uh, increased fees for uh, so services, um, you know, typical uh, maintenance fees for New Vision, Vision, <coughs> Stoneware, eSchool, and et cetera, those have gone up based, based upon CPI. The, the consumer pricing index usually uh, an additional anywhere between two to four uh, percent. We've added the Munis work order system for uh, Department of Public Works and IT. Uh, and then again, the uh, the personal services we had a decrease, and again that's that was due to attrition and not refilling those positions. Some potential modifications to the budget: a reduction of the BOE expenses. They eliminated a software uh, that is in this budget, but as we met with at the ITPC, they're eliminating ProTracks, which is a tracking software for uh, CEUs uh, that they can that they're not required to track anymore. So that's ten thousand dollars, <coughs> and then E-rate uh, reductions for the telecom. The number of five hundred one thousand that's at our telecom side uh, will be reduced by one hundred eleven thousand due to E-rate savings. So for, for the schools, we're at approximately 50% of cost that E-rate will supply that for. Um, it's required not to take that directly off of the budget. They, they, um, the, from our E-rate uh, consultant, it's necessary to budget for that, but it's pretty, pretty certain that we would get that reduction. From that, but they want us to see. They want to see us budget for the full dollar amount, so that in the event it's reduced, um, we we budgeted for that full amount, but we we don't anticipate that getting reduced, that being removed the E rate. Um, other potential increases are certainly services and equipment re uh, required for non-Windows devices to the network, as we look to add. Uh, BYOD and other devices, we have a managed network of Windows equipment on that, and that allows us to manage easily, uh, provide images, and get those devices in alignment. If we're looking at adding non-Windows <coughs> type devices to our network and having to support that, <coughs> our support structure doesn't doesn't uh, isn't capable of supporting that multi-open platform standard where you can have you know uh, Linux. Max iOS's and that as as we add these different technologies, if we if the IT department is expected to manage those, that the resources will either have to look for uh, either additional equipment for management capabilities, mobile devices. They have products that are available called mobile device management that allows us to bring it in, but that's not in this budget. Um, nobody's talked about doing that, but if if that does come down the road, those are expenses that will be incurred that we're not aware of. Um, other technologies that, to be supported, Android, iOS, again, if, if there's going to be a plethora of non-Windows devices coming onto our network and IT <coughs> is going to be tasked with supporting those, um, it, it will be an additional cost. Uh, and again, um, the main emphasis was when we brought in a product like Stoneware, that would be the gateway for these non-managed devices, but if that if that proves not to be the the uh, the gateway that is chosen to be used, and they want to go directly to anybody who's using those devices, want to directly connect to the network, then we have to find some sort of management mechanism, uh, and and that will be a, a change in our philosophy. <coughs> so that's it for uh, IT and. Um, Welcome. Any questions or okay. comments? Thank you, Paul. Uh, questions? We'll start with Cindy. Thank go you, to Tom. <coughs> Just um, if you could clarify, 
the support for the North Thompsonville Fire Department. Yeah. Are we supporting all the fire departments or just that one? And we're so we're supporting the other four fire departments. Um, Earl's, you know, he was he wanted to wait till we got everything in place uh, and make you know make sure the other groups are going to be happy with it. So we're hoping to sell them on our services coming soon. Okay. Now, will they be paying the town? Yes. Oh. Do the other fire departments get the Yes, they do. Okay. Yeah. And is that money reflected in your budget? Yes, it is. It's, it's one of the revenues. Okay. And then the other <coughs> question I have with regards to the Board of Ed, the most expenses, it's about $120,000 for, for, for a cost savings to the town side? That, that's, well, that would be, it would be a reduction of what the Board of Ed would have to contribute. So who's carrying that cost, the town side, or is that just eliminated because just be eliminated. It would be eliminated. <clears throat> so how much is your budget increasing from last year? From last year, it is increasing, um, uh, the difference is 7.2% overall. About $280,000 roughly. Correct. And you said primarily that's due to changing technology. Correct. Grades and whatnot. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Cindy. Tom. Um, it's kind of a side question, so that down the road I have the information. But in terms of the uh, the Board of Ed, they have uh, started to do some things separate from the IT department, as I want to say, like their own IT department. <coughs> okay. Follow me so far. Yes. Okay. Yep. For, for this past several months and now going forward, um, do you see a any redundancies in there that you could currently handle? No, no. Uh, well, one of the one of the resources that through attrition <coughs> is they hired uh, oh, one one of our our, our our systems analysts to do all school related um, technology. So they've taken on that workload. Uh, so we, we don't have to provide support for the e-school uh, IEP plus. And then the second question I had was uh, uh, regarding Munis. I know that in my experience with it in other towns and what I've hear, heard so far here in a couple of years is that as you, as you grow into using the systems, bringing on the inventory system, different software uh, startups, um, you have a, a load to get people up to speed, programmers, all that. Correct. Where do you see that in its, you know, uh, next year, this year, compared to last year in terms of the workload that you guys have with uh, with that? And well, I, I'll, I'll, <coughs> each, year, each year there's going to be upgrades, um, and I'm sure we'll be continuing to implement additional systems, whether they're part of the Munis package or not. <coughs> Um, I, I see it continuing, you know, at least at the level we're at, and then increasing based upon newer systems, such as the work order system is a newer system, so we're adding that workload. Um, so you don't see a, a whew, all right, we got that done. No. Okay. Yeah, I, I see this as a, and as soon as we have it done, there's a new version that's out and with a large financial system. We put that in test. And, and really run it through its rigors before we roll that live. So it's usually about a three month process to get it through the testing and updates, making sure all the enhancements work as build and, and that it doesn't change anything that we already have in existence. Okay. Thanks. I'm good. Any further questions? Ken? Is this your proposed budget, Matt? Is this the number you came up with? In your budget? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is, how was your original bu uh, budget different than this before Matt? No, this was, this was it. This yeah. was it. Yeah, it was great. So you didn't change anything? No. Just, no. are we going through this? Uh, $70,000 roughly, based on the, the write-up that you gave us, but that might have been in revenue. Well, a, a couple a couple right. of things that, that most likely changed was the, um, distribution of the uh, workers comp costs and also the pension costs and you're, you're gonna see that in, in different departments where I didn't really do anything other than uh, when we went to the disbursement of those costs changed them yep. okay that's all I have
Anyone else? I have um, one question that was on the slide, just because Matt and I met with the superintendent and the board chair a couple days ago, and uh, again, they were talking about their budget. Um, and they said that they're going to have a meeting with you, I think, yesterday or, or whenever this week. Is that 121 that's up on your slide a result of the most recent meeting? You know, is that further? Further reductions from the yeah since yes our meeting yes that was yeah the very so next that was day, the result ITPC. of that of that <coughs> ITPC meeting that Correct. they were looking for yeah. clarifications in the IT budget Correct. Yep. and and there's actually um, it was sent out late yesterday uh, but they updated that <coughs> spreadsheet they had given to us which I'll get yep. out to council as well um, they had eliminated the fifty five thousand on the lease for the testing equipment as okay. well so. <laughs> So that number is <coughs> a little bit smaller as well. Oh, so, so that's another 50. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? I, I have so a, a ahead, systems Bill. question. The um, the GIS system. Yes. Is that still a hosted service by the a provider? Yes. Yeah. We we have the capability of bringing it on on board. Uh, we have to do one of our CIP requests to bring in the server for it. Will it be Apple um, compatible at that point? As far as Safari or Firefox, yeah. I believe so. Uh, I can I can check on that. Well, we because uh, it was going to benefit a lot of the uh, information that's going to be used for um, the fire department yeah. site plans and, and working with that. And I know that their their plans are to use iPads and some of the vehicles in that. But I'll, I'll verify that. So you would expect a performance improvement regardless? Yes. Okay. Yes. Great. Um, if I could, uh, in, are we going to do this separately, or, or is, are we, uh, can we dive into the, a couple of the numbers? You can, you can right. dive as whatever um, you want. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's actually quite enlightening, the, the way that thing, you can see things broken down. Just to, I'm just curious about a couple um, where we've got, um, this is page nine, where it goes through some of the um, academic packages. Okay. And I don't expect an answer now. Someone could follow up with me. I'm just curious why the unit quantity for some of these things appears to be 12. Um, I guess my question is, is that number of grades? Monthly. 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 Okay. Thank you. I'm all set to go. Hey, just a quick on the GIS and uh, cell phone applications, too. You can't <coughs> pull that up on, on cell phones. Uh, smartphones type? Yeah, smartphones. Oh. Especially for more than likely probably from an iPhone. Right. right. Is that a, something that could be fixed in the future also? That's that's what I'm going to check on as well. Yeah, so it, it'll, it'll affect all iOS. I'm sure we'll check for Android, Windows phones. Yeah, that's, yep. that's, that's more language I understand. We'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. My Wii. <laughs> Thanks. We don't actually have them on. The Wii? <laughs> the Wii, whatever. <coughs> I think the Wii might be Safari as well. Yeah, I believe it is. Anyone else? Do employees who attend budget workshops get any uh, you know, special bonus from their department? <coughs> I got a half a ham sandwich over here. <laughs> <laughs> they, get to, they get to spend more time with me. Yeah. <laughs> well, we had made a deal that if you asked for an employee's raise and they were here, we were going to grant it tonight. But since you didn't ask, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> now, now these are going to be slammed with people. Yeah. <laughs> the grievance will be on your desk in the morning. <laughs> That's the, the good and bad for about going first. It. Right. <laughs> Hey, thank you very much. Appreciate okay, you done. coming in and the presentation. Oh, thank you. When, when we're done, I guess. Uh, we'll be done later. Well, I think we're done now. <laughs> It'll go a lot quicker from here on out. A lot quicker. A lot quicker. Are we going in, in order yes. of the agenda? Yes. So that nice. means our next um, presentation is by our town attorney. Mr. Kevin Deneen, Esquire. Thank you. Uh, I knew I was in trouble following the technology guy because I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was showing where's my, your, where's my, your PowerPoint? My PowerPoint uh, processes. <laughs> uh, uh, as a lawyer, you're still in the paper and uh, thing. Uh, 
as you all know, uh, the town attorney's office is responsible for researching and writing legal opinions, reviewing and drafting ordinances, uh, contracts, agreements, other documents. Uh, we represent and defend the town's interest in litigation, arbitration, administrative uh, appeals, and similar proceedings. We deal a lot and seem to be increasing dealing with FOI requests and some uh, very much out of the box uh, FOI requests that we're getting on there. Uh, we support the various departments, <coughs> collection of taxes. Uh, Acquisition and sale of real estate, um, enforcement of ordinances. We work with the, uh, the various departments on that. We also work with the safety committee and risk manager uh, over the last several years of building up a little bit more on that. Um, I have to say, it, it certainly in comparison to some of the other towns that uh, my office currently represents, we've been involved with. Uh, the town manager and in, in Enfield is a heavy user of, of legal services. Um, uh, much more. Well, it, it, it's a much more proactive approach to it. I can tell you that a lot of other departments, you know, over the last five, five or six years, we've averaged 250 to 275 uh, reviews a year of contracts and other documents on that. Most other towns, we don't routine, routinely review contracts unless it's a major contract, a building contract, or a construction contract that's on that. Um, it does uh, lend itself to a lot of cost avoidance down the road. It's sometimes hard to quantify because you can't say we avoided this litigation or this other issue, but. Uh, I can certainly say over the last several years that I've been here, we've certainly seen that uh, that's on there. Um, overall, uh, the budget uh, that we're presenting hasn't doesn't really changed much at all. We really have salary, staff, uh, and benefits, uh, and then I, I really like when they put the percentages that we have a 66 percent increase in our office supplies because we went from 150 to 250 dollars <laughs> uh, on that one. Uh, don't know how that got by me. Uh, well, you know, we didn't have the percentages in the document at that point. But that's uh, several years ago. We went from uh, two support staff down to one, uh, and you can see that in, actually in the FY3 to FY2 uh, actuals that were on there. Um, and that's it. We're 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 fairly busy um, within the the legal services budget. There is uh, fifteen thousand dollars, which is the uh, amount for uh, <coughs> litigation expense and, and labor expense, <coughs> any other conflicts. That's really a, a number that's hard to predict year to year. Uh, we brought that down. We were able to do a lot more in-house uh, with regard to some of the labor stuff that we typically farmed out. Uh, but again, that's the only one that's sort of uh, unpredictable depending on what litigation gets instigated and whether they resolve quickly or not. So. Um, it's a much more uh, simpler uh, budget, I think, or, or uh, less complicated budget than the IT one we just went through, but uh, I'd be happy to respond to any questions. Questions on the town attorney's budget? Ken. Good job. Um, on the papers we were given tonight, mm -hmm. your budget, your personal budget's not on here? It is. Uh, that's in the, the legal item, which is... Uh, 533-200, if you switch over to page, the, 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 the detail of it is on page three. Five, page three right down here where it says I'm legal, three, town attorney three, compensation. Right here, $75,000. 55 is for me, and then the 15 is that mm -hmm. litigation mm -hmm. component mm -hmm. and outside services. Which is, it's actually right here to this is legal. Okay. It's, okay. Thank you. So, anyone else? Town attorney's budget. Anyone else? Is the is the uh, next one question? Yep. Go ahead, Tom. The mileage is that is that mileage for travel, basically going up to? It's not for me. It's it's for the staff. staff. Right. <coughs> staff have have to go to hard for to go for an FOI commissioner hearing and use their own vehicle. Oh, wow. That's what's running a lot. That looks like, huh? <laughs> well, in the the, uh, the IRS mileage limitation has gone significantly up as gas prices and everything else. Right. No, great job, thank you. Cindy, Kevin, it's a nice clean budget. Thank you. And thanks for your hard work. Anyone else? Very good. Are you benefited? No. No. Okay. 
Thank you. Would you like to be? No. You benefit from <laughs> all yeah, last year. No, that's <laughs> that didn't go on. I didn't know. Last year, right? Yes. yes. Well, you I remember. Kevin, right don't you feel like you benefit from being with us? I do. You? Thank you, Kevin. Okay. You going to stick around for the other ones? Uh, I have to pick up a yeah. soccer player in Farmington. <laughs> <laughs> And I know I'll be able to watch Steve's presentation I'll on uh, you tomorrow. ETV tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, oh, emergency <laughs> management snacks. Looks like Steve found your 150 <laughs> bucks. Is that right? I thought you had uh, um, human resources. HR, yes. <laughs> Got a half a ham sandwich over here. <laughs> I already ate the other half. <laughs> <clears throat> Welcome. Good evening, everyone. Um, I apologize if I speak fast. I was told to get this done in five minutes or start updating my resume. So I'm going <laughs> to mosey on right along. You'd be the guy who knows how to do that, right? <laughs> um, let me start off by saying my budget went down by $277. All right, thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me just tell you what we've been up to. Um, <laughs> mission statement is still the same, as which is provide quality service to an area of benefits, personnel, administration. Uh, Return employees. Uh, we have, since last year, we've had a part timer in my office um, who's currently Maya Matthews. Um, phenomenal job helping us out, getting a lot of the filing done, a lot of the backlog that was accumulating, which is beneficial to us when we get audited and they look for 10 personnel folders, they'll see that it's been updated and everything's been filed. So, a tremendous <clears throat> asset to have that part timer. Um, and we've also, since Last year, we moved into a new department, so a new office. Feel free to stop by. Let's see. This year is a busy year. Uh, I have currently four contracts that are expiring. I just started negotiations, um, or I will be starting negotiations uh, imminently, um, and I'll be coming to you guys to apprise you of what we are going to be proposing. But uh, two big contracts, the police contract, the Department of Public Works, and supervisory contract and uh, professional technical union. Uh, we just wrapped up the clerical one and hopefully I'll have the EMS one before you guys in a matter of uh, a month or two. Um, a couple other objectives yeah. is um, we, op we rolled out open enrollment for all employees through uh, ESS. We are looking to do that for uh, uh, performance evaluations this year. And another thing <coughs> on the objective list that I want to highlight was drafting an RFP for actuarial services and pension investment services. That's something that hasn't been done in quite some time, and it's something that's uh, time to go out to the market and see what's out there. Um, last page of the slide. Uh, these numbers are pretty much similar to last year. We did reduce unemployment compensation down to 120. I noticed that it's been trending down partially because the extended benefits has been discontinued. And unless we have a massive layoffs or something, um, I don't foresee that number going up, uh, increasing unemployment. But um, professional technical uh, is about the same. Uh, I, I do want, during this budget period, anticipate doing a police recruitment, which is a, a large uh, task on our part. <laughs> And anyone who's come out to the recruitment, you'll see what we, we're, yeah. it's, a, it's a big undertaking. But um, other than that, though, um, it's $277 less than it was last year. So I'm free to answer any questions you may have. I, I have a All comment. Right. Go ahead, Tom. Uh, I love your new office. I love your people. And uh, you get a bright, cheery, friendly HR. Not that it wasn't friendly before, but it just it's really nice to go in there. Good job. Thanks. Thank you. Questions, Tom. Yeah, could you explain a little bit on your advertising budget? Where, where do you advertise now? Where, where are you looking? Where are you spending those dollars? Um, I try to avoid spending it. Um, uh, it. It depends on what we're recruiting for. How, how far I need to cast the net. For police recruitment, um, sure, that's, a good that's a that can be a wide net. Last uh, and uh, that's why I bumped it up because last year I uh, or the last recruitment I advertised in the New York Post. That's a lot of eyeballs reading that paper, and I got some good recruits, and we've hired some good hires from NYPD, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. um, they don't pay very well out there, and they see what we're offering here, they're like, wow, you know, learn, learn there, come earn over here. So, uh, but, but ink, every time you advertise in ink, it's, it's expensive. Right, so, Hartford Current can be expensive. So, so we are still advertising in ink as yep. much as we possibly can. I think that's important that 
Yeah, um, sure also for the police, I do it in a, there's a minority newspaper. I try to um, get as much diversity as I can. That helps us for our um, CALEA certification, helps us for our EEO numbers to, to, to cast a net as broad and as um, wide as possible. Mm -hmm. um, but if I can avoid using it sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, if it's a local thing, you know, I'll, I'll sometimes all I need to do is put it on the website uh, for some associations, you know. Uh, and then that doesn't cost as much, or it's, it's not as expensive. But there is sometimes a cost. So some of the most of those internet ones also that are out there, especially yeah. specialized ones, are, are relatively inexpensive. Are they comparatively speaking, compared to ink? Ink, ink is expensive. Ink. Okay. But if it's just an electronic thing on someone's website, it's not as expensive. Great, thank you, Cindy. Um, I just want to say thank you. It's a nice, clean budget and good job. Thank you. Nice. Anyone else? Uh, can't just find can you um, <laughs> again uh, on the unemployment number, um, and I know we bumped that up at a time when we were laying folks off. Yep. And so it's it's you're maintaining at 120. What's the rationalization? For that? <laughs> well, the prior year we spent like 146, right. uh, and, that, and that's when it was bumped up to 150. But that's when we knew there were still mandating extended benefits. You know, traditionally it's 26 weeks, they doubled it to 52, and then I think they even extended it beyond that, but then I, that's been discontinued. So um, a lot of it depends on the labor market. Employees, um, we've had employees that we let go, but they found jobs right away. So they're not uh, collecting as long. Um, you know, sometimes it's a, it's a little bit of a, like a crapshoot as far as what we need to allocate, because, you know, sometimes there's terminations that are unforeseeable, but, um, for the most part, I think 120 covers it because that's what uh, was close to last year. And I, with the numbers, unless there's some bump that I'm not foreseeing, uh, 120 should cover it this year. And so far this year, we're five, two, five, well. Zero. Keep in mind, it's they're always like two months in the uh, in behind. It's so it's so nerve wracking trying to guess what our yeah. numbers are because Jen Baker in my office who pays the bill, you know, we're we're two years. There's always Bill two months behind. I don't know why. Right now, it looks as though you got the whole amount spent. Yeah, and I was I saw that as well. And because it's a round number, there's something wrong. There's something wrong. Yeah. Well, it's probably all encumbered. That's yeah. Oh, that's what I'm okay. knowing. Jen, she probably encumbered it. Yeah. <laughs> which is she encumbers it on July one. <laughs> 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 which makes it easier. For her. That's what we've been preaching, right? So, so we we'll get what the actual expenditure is out of that. I can I can do the year to date if you like. I'll yeah. That up. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions? Oh, just and this is the general one for non-union employees. <coughs> so, understanding that it's HR that that the uh, benefits administrator and the personnel administrator are un are non-union. So you, Matt, in your budget, have you allocated funds in a separate area for the typical? Um, non-union pay raise conversation that the council yep. has yeah as well as understanding we have four contracts open <clears throat> so you know what we typically do is we yep. do set aside those numbers okay yeah all right great <coughs> anyone else <coughs> Steve thank you all very right. much thank you Mayor, members like of the council, please. like uh, the town attorney, I don't have a PowerPoint presentation <coughs> tonight. Um, the uh, emergency management budget, which we have before you, is basically level funded as it was for the current fiscal year. Uh, the categories where the fundings are uh, appropriated have pretty much st stayed the same based on uh, what we foresee for the upcoming year. Uh, the current fiscal year we're in right now has been a lot less active compared to the year before when we had to deal with four presidential uh, three presidential declarations and a bunch of uh, incidents and activities. Um, we uh, have had two uh, substantial incidents that required full-scale activation, uh, Hurricane Sandy and then Winter Storm Nemo. Fortunately, for <coughs> one field, in terms of power outages, uh, we were spared substantially uh, from uh, having to deal with a lot of uh, traumatic damages compared to other parts of the state and the Northeast, and especially in terms of Winter Storm Sandy, which was devastating to the south of us. 
and, uh, and an all around. And I think a lot of it is geography and terrain that is really was to our benefit. Uh, however, we do continue to uh, work uh, in preparing and planning. Uh, we are currently in the process of working with FEMA on getting reimbursement for the 72-hour window that FEMA, has the president, has declared to be eligible for reimbursement. We think it's a roughly about a hundred thousand dollar cost that may be eligible. We have to do some review, uh, still based on public works and police, and then meet with the FEMA. And if depending on what the final eligible amount of reimbursement is, then we will pursue uh, 75 percent reimbursement, which is what FEMA allows. The other thing, which as we know is a sore point in this community, I have already uh, brought it to the attention of the state uh, about the need for them to expedite the pass-through of the FEMA money once it's awarded to Enfield to this community through their agency. And as you know, last year we waited over nearly six months for that to occur and required some <coughs> intervention uh, from uh, congressmen to uh, make that happen for us. The uh, Some of the other areas, just we continue in emergency management, we continue with our uh, twice a year emergency management workshop which we hold for department heads and also local community uh, agencies here in the community. We do one in, we tried to do one, initially it was going to be done on the end of October uh, in 2012, but because of Hurricane Sandy we had to kick it back to later into November. Uh, the uh, And I had purposely moved the winter one back several weeks to try to avoid based on what he had dealt with Alfred. Uh, I'm almost concerned about trying to move it back to Labor Day, not knowing what we're going to get hit with then. Uh, the uh, next one will be in June. Uh, we will, uh, in the beginning of June, that one we will be focusing on not only on our seasonal preparations, but we're going to be focusing on some of the local assets we have here in Enfield uh, that have been developed uh, that's available for the local emergency agencies in responding to an incident. Uh, We've recently put a hundred, had 158 Town of Enfield employees go through the Red Cross Shelter Worker Training. Hmm. Uh, we did that through four, through uh, three classes in one day, uh, three hours per class. We did one shift in the morning, one in the afternoon, and one in the evening. And so that we have a cadre of personnel trained that can work in the event we hopefully do not experience a situation like we did with after Winter Storm Alfred where we have a sustained sheltering operation. So our organizational capacity to hopefully address an incident like this has improved. Uh, we also uh, are pushing to get refresher training from CLMP with our public works crews on what we call make safe training where they where they CLMP would work crew would work with our public works team when they have the situation with down wires mixed in with wires and debris <coughs> and trees with debris and the road is blocked, that CLP comes in, makes safe, and we can clear the road right away. We did that very effectively during winter storm, during hur I mean, Hurricane Sandy, and we want to have that on an annual basis so that we can hopefully avoid the risk of anybody getting injured from uh, down wires mixed in with tree and debris. Uh, and then uh, we, are all, we are working, I am working with the emergency, with the EMS captain, Chuck Grasso, who is also the emergency management assistant in, uh, in uh, the emergency management operations. Fortunately, he does have experience in a number of different areas, and we are working on some different projects right now, not only just in NEMO reimbursement, but also on our reunification plan, which uh, we wanted to put in place. We need to update for the uh, schools. That's it in a nutshell uh, from the emergency management side. And the only other comment I would just have is in the CIP budget, uh, we had a request, uh, which unfortunately did not make it, uh, for a new generator for Fermi High School that would provide power to the entire building. Uh, we are going to continue to make that request because we see the need to have more than one facility of that size uh, with a generator of that capacity. We, in talking with the school building committee uh, from a representative, our staff liaison uh, for the new Enfield High School, that building will have a full power generator, I've been told. So that, along with JFK, will give it two facilities, and we hope to get uh, Fermi High School online that same, so that we have some flexibility in the event we have a large scale incident, or we lose one or two of the other two facilities uh, due to any number of different factors. Hmm. And with that, I'll answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Dan. Cindy? Thank you, Dan. Um, again, you know, you always do a great job. With regards to the generator, I remember that the 
discussion. I remember the, the need for that. What is the cost for GM? We are requesting two hundred and twenty thousand no, dollars for no. a diesel power generator. Okay. It's a big building and it's going to require a good sized generator, Councilman. Are there any grant monies available? We are pursuing grants, uh, but we also have to look at other facilities in the town where we want to pursue for grants. And within that is our priority to get our sewer pump station generators. A number of them are up there in age. Uh, during Alfred, we had a couple that we had to bring in on an emergency basis rentals, and we want to get them restored because as much as we'd like to have a facility, another facility with a full power generator, we can't afford to lose a sewer pump station. That is from environment health and public safety perspective, huge. Right, so we're working on, on getting the generator off people's sewer. Sanitary, the W pollution control system, absolutely. That we're really focusing on that. Thank you, Dan. Tom, on FEMA reporting, um, now I, I believe that FEMA wants uh, certain electronic reporting now from the department head. So, if you have a department head out at a disaster, they're going to require electronic pictures um, and files for, with iPads. And, and I heard there was some money out there to, to be able to make sure our department heads uh, get those iPads so they can report properly well, to, to FEMA. Right, what we do when we have the documentation <coughs> is because we have iPhones already with our department heads and with mm -hmm. a number of our staff, they can take digital photos of, of uh, any files. For example, when we had our initial sit down with FEMA on NEMA, we had photos, digital photos of the snow piles out of Brainerd Park available to show them as documented proof, uh, especially given the nature of that situation. That, that we met with them like a month and a half after the incident mm -hmm. and we wasn't sure we we're gonna have the same amount of snow present uh, the uh, it, a lot of that was lessons learned from Alfred where there was huge debris piles and trying to get that documented so we're all set yeah, yes that much. great thank you very much anyone else for Dan um, just a comment at the uh, Scanic spring splash the uh, the trailer Correct. Uh, was out and it was uh, great to see that they have some form of mobile capacity and right. the setup there and and I spoke to them briefly and it seems like they whoever <coughs> secured the trailer and got it outfitted did a really good job and it came in uh, that was very our inexpensively yes that was our building and grounds division personnel okay. uh, they do outstanding work and that this fitting out on the interior was done entirely by them, and then our Public Works uh, Highway Division sign unit uh, did the lettering. They're going to go back and do some other signage, but uh, a substantial amount of money was saved by them doing that work uh, within the Public Works Department. Okay. This was done totally in-house. Nice. Correct. Nice. Any other questions for Dan and Emergency Management? Great. I thank thank you, you very much. <coughs> Matt? <coughs> manager's budget. Good evening. Is there a PowerPoint presentation? Uh, unfortunately, the lamp has gone out, so I won't be able to do that tonight. So it'll just be a okay. a verbal oral you, presentation. You can send it to our, our, our uh, iPad. For some reason, I have no <laughs> connection. I just, you know, as soon as Paul left, it just dark, went blank. It went dark down. fiber. <laughs> the dark the <coughs> fiber went dark. Um, as council is aware, uh, our office handles a, a variety of uh, duties for the town of Enfield, um, and most of them aren't done by me. So, uh, <laughs> well, it's true. Uh, you know, whether it's the uh, constituent follow-up and uh, overseeing a number of different uh, important departments and operations by uh, Dan, uh, if it's handling uh, the calls coming in, scheduling of meetings, uh, by Deb uh, or uh, a lot of the work in terms of the filing and ETV by Maya um, you know our office tends to be a very very busy place uh, on a daily <coughs> basis and uh, as the workload has increased and the abilities of our staff has increased we, we just keep taking on more and more and I know we had a conversation in last year's uh, budget discussions about bringing uh, Maya on full-time uh, in this year's budget I have accounted for her position going from uh, a 19 and a half uh, hour week to a full-time position uh, we feel that uh, besides the obvious of, of having the coverage within the office uh, 
for the phones and for walk-ins that at times we do lack. Uh, we're also getting, as you're aware, uh, a person who's very skilled working with ETV and doing a number of different uh, uh, promotional programs for us. And we like to see that increase uh, with her coming on full time. I'd also like to say that uh, something you may not think about, and, and it really has been uh, something that has uh, taken a lot of uh, time from our office, is the amount of meetings that we are now handling uh, with, whether it's the uh, security committee, uh, whether it's the <coughs> subcommittees of council, you know, our requirements to take minutes and, and produce those have been kind of bogging us down. And so adding uh, additional time into the office for uh, Maya will allow us to get caught up there and hopefully get more done on the uh, posting uh, of those minutes and such. So salary, we moved some money that was in the part-time, which we had budgeted 13.5 in the current year, uh, takes her up, uh, you know, that money's moved up into the salaries. It adds the uh, benefits, obviously, whether it's health care or or what we'll be paying in for uh, the increase in the Medicare and Social, Sur or Social Security. The, really, the only other area that uh, would be a, a sizable increase is in our uh, printing and reproduction. And originally, what we had talked about and went in as the department request was going back to the annual report that we were doing. Um, and, and it's something that, that you know, we, we unfortunately a few years ago eliminated because of uh, reductions in budget, but it is something that we continually hear from people <coughs> that they miss. Um, it just, again, we, we put some, ultimately in my budget proposal, we put some money towards doing something, but not to the same level as what we were looking at. Unfortunately, it was about $10,000 plus to produce and mail or distribute you know, that type of document. Um, we feel we need, still need to do something, but we're just not going to be able to go to that level uh, that we were doing just uh, a few years ago. <clears throat> and that will be the extent of my comments. Okay. I am open for any questions. Questions? I got Cindy, then Ken. I have a question. I just have a comment. Your office is running very smoothly, and uh, you know, Again, I'd like to. Uh, you can. Oh yeah, sure. This is a public meeting. Yeah. Sorry, Cindy. No, your office is running smoothly, and I attribute that primarily to the women in your office. Not, not that you gentlemen aren't the doing jobs. The women in the office. You know this. Very, very, very discriminatory. I, I have to say, it is true because <laughs> because in your absence, you know, we call or, or people have issues, and. Both of the young ladies are very professional and very um, accommodating to people. So having said that, I would fully support Maya, um, and of course Debbie too. So I, I think that's wise, what, what you're looking to do, and I um, thank you for thinking ahead and, and doing that, putting that into the budget. That's only Cindy. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Cindy. Ken, Tom, Tom. You have a stipend here of $5,600. Yep. What's that for? Those are the uh, non-union benefits for the three. So it would be for the assistant town manager, uh, the secretary, and then the new secretary position going full time. Benefits if they get in pay or? Yeah, if you may, well, I don't know if you remember back, but uh, right around 2000, 2001, council adopted uh, a program for non-union employees to get 3% uh, of their salary in what they call a non-union stipend, and they can use it for different types of, uh, of benefits, uh, whether it's to uh, use for, um, yeah, you know. Cafeteria style. Yeah, cafeteria style, thank you. That's what I was trying to think of, cafeteria style benefits. They could actually uh, put money towards their um, health care contributions. Uh, there's, I think, mm -hmm. four or five different contacts. Uh, there's four or five different options that they could use that money for, but it, it's not paid out to them. It has to be used in one of those uh, defined okay. ways. And then position classification. You only have one assistant town manager in here? Yeah, and, and that's because, and you'll see that on Saturday when we meet 
we're, we're going to account for the cost of that position in the development services budget still. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I know it's kind of a sore subject, but I know yourself and other people have gone a while without raises in your department. Is that the case this year also? I mean, because we can't, I appreciate it, but you've <coughs> given it up a few years now, Matt. So um, is this including the raise you would normally get or not? No, there's, you know, with all non-union, we, we don't budget pay increases. That's something that, you know, obviously we talk about later on in the process and council will lay out mm -hmm. what, what, you know, non-union benefit increases would be. Right. It's just I have a problem if the unions keep getting raises, we cannot hold back from the non-union mm -hmm. people. So, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Ken. Tom? <clears throat> yeah, on the, on the reproduction, no, uh, 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 printing, start printing the book again to the public and... Yeah, the, the calendar document that we've the done. The calendar document. Yeah. It's something that, that right. as you're probably aware, yeah. it was very, very popular yeah, with the it residents, is, and, yeah. and it, it, it's a great, say, promotional tool, but it's a very, very important informational tool <laughs> for the residents as well, and it gives us that opportunity to kind of get our message out. And like I said, you know, the last <coughs> few years we've been looking at trying to do it in a way that, that is cost effective, and, you know, we've been doing th some things online, but it just, it doesn't reach the, 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 the population that we really need to reach. And, it just, again, in, in the times we are, it's just hard to put that money into the budget to, to do a full-scale uh, document like that. No, I think it's time to uh, put it back in. I know a lot of people are, are not, you know, on the uh, on the computer to be able to do that. And they right. came in, they come, to, they pay their taxes, they or, you know, pick up a calendar, okay. uh, or when they're visiting in the, in the town, I think it's great to bring it back again. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Calendars. Yeah. All set, Tom? Mm-hmm. Thanks. Tom? Did you skip Cindy? No. No? Because she spoke first. Oh, okay. Um, just two real quick ones. Um, on, the, on the workers' comp, is that a people issue or is that? No, that, that's just the, uh, the breakdown that we do. We assign to all the different departments. Primarily it's done by wages, right? Lynn? Yes, it's done by wages. And this year, I want to ban our annual So, so that's well, why you're at 44. Your injury problem? Your injury problem. Yeah, so, problem. Wow. So is that why there's a shift? Because normally there's nothing in that line item of any significance. Right. That's, that's why the shift. All right. And then the other question was um, the um, uh, the medical. I assume that's because Maya becoming right. full time. Yep. That, that's what's giving you that extra jack there. We didn't. We didn't have. A, we had, what was our increase this year? Zero. 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 Which you know we don't talk about a lot, but. But, uh, you That's know, I, I, think, I think the things that, uh, you know, council allowed us to do a few years ago by going self-funded and then switching from uh, Anthem to, to uh, Cigna, uh, I think uh, this year we've, we've got a zero, <coughs> maybe even better, you never know. Um, last year it was less than 4%, I think. The You're the first zero I've heard of this year. And, and the year before that, it was less than 5%. So for the last three years, and, and in the industry, I know you know you're in. There are double digits. Um, exactly. And to be able to, to walk out the door this year without an increase is incredible. And that's because we went self-insured. Yep. But even still, last year you were self-insured, and you yep. still have a, you should still have an increase. Yeah. Three. Yeah, that's unheard of. When we set that up. We, we knew just about the time it was going to start. We told the folks yep. that we interrupt it. Okay, I'm good. good. Thanks. Greg? Yeah, I, I just want to say uh, for the public, I remember when we uh, worked on this between the Board of Ed and, and the Town Council, uh, we uh, predicted that the, the savings would be after we vested ourselves and we saw that the pattern. And so to, uh, to have a zero on our insurance increase because of that, I think, proves that out. So I uh, want to compliment the, that work. Good choice. Good choice, yeah. Good choice. Good choice. Good choice. So, some things we did a few years ago seem to work out. Yes. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? Oh, there's, I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyone else for the manager's budget? I have my one question on the man, um, on the new position or on the uh, moving to full time for Maya's position. Yep. 
how are you going to manage the time that she spends in the town manager's <coughs> office? Because I, I, I love the work that she does for ETV, but it's also out. Yeah. It's outside the manager's office. Yep. So bringing her to full time, which I support and believe the capacity <coughs> is there in your office yep. that she's not going, but the assistance is needed in the town manager's office. Yep. So is there a plan to, to say, all right, she's full time, but her job is 75% in the manager's office, 25% uh, ETV, Good News, Enfields. How are you going to manage that? Well, my, my perspective on it is, you know, the work that Maya has been doing, even though it shows up on ETV, is really part of our outreach and educational program that we do. Um, however, you know, going forward, as we'll talk on, on Saturday, you're going to see a proposal to shift uh, a part-time person who is uh, working for ETV in the library, move them fully into ETV and effectively become a station manager, mm -hmm. which would then take time away or, or responsibilities away from uh, the library director, but also allow more time to be spent on doing production um, for ETV. So the, the thought process is we're gonna be gaining some, some level of work there that wouldn't require Maya's time. Um, so, it, it, I, I believe we'll still be doing a number of things uh, with Maya, but it's probably going to be reduced over what she's doing today. Because I, I just think that, you know, again, the, the level and, and the amount of things that we're doing now in the office is going to demand more of the stuff that is being done and needs to be done in the office. Right. So it, it's going to be a little bit of a loss. Um, I, I think, you know, the next evolution of ETV going forward is, you know, maybe to, to get somebody similar to Maya to be able to take over some of those responsibilities, but that's probably, you know, a year or so away. Not, not going to happen this upcoming year. And, and Councilman uh, Nelson is, you know, just, uh, you know, we could do kind of like, you know, the Enfield Idol for TV or something like that. We could TV do like idol. the Joey and Ken show, Laurel and Hardy. Yeah. The three yeah. Stooges. Fat and skinny. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But well, we don't call yourself fat on TV. No, I pointed to you. <laughs> you know, we, we, we are finding, uh, if you recall, the uh, economic development uh, video that uh, ETV and Maya put together. Uh, they're working on uh, a, a promotional tool for the FRC right now. Um, you know, there's just there's so much we can spotlight for the town of Enfield in using this. That that again, you know, that economic development video, for instance, you know, it's about a five minute video. Uh, you know, we were getting calls from companies that were willing to do that for twenty five, thirty thousand right. dollars, and and did it all in house. And I, I would put it up against any one of those companies that were offering to do it for twenty twenty five thousand dollars. So we have a great skill level here that we keep developing and developing. But again, you know. Our priority is going to be the things that, that you know, service the council more, uh, service the residents a little bit more, and so we're going to lose a little bit there, but um, there'll still be some some work done, but not as much as what we've done in the past. Absent funding, is there anything that precludes Maya, because she's a great personality, mm -hmm. um, to do any ETV work, you know, outside her normal day in the town manager's office, right. evenings, weekends. It, it, it will get into in, in something that we, we try to stay away from in terms of, you know, overtime. So that, she, it would kick her into overtime because yeah. a, a person can't hold two roles. Correct. So and, it, and similar, in fact, that, you know, she's kind of doing it now and will still be doing some of those things. And that, that's why I think, you know, we, we're, we're going to start looking, again, not, not as part of the upcoming year, but probably in the following year, to develop, you know, maybe some part-time, you know, person like Maya yeah. that, that can step in as well. Because I think, you know, the, the strategy, and going to that, and talk about now instead of Saturday, but the strategy is that, that, again, ETV, if you look from where we started back in 2006 to where we're at now, we want to evolve it into more programming original programming at the local level. 
And so moving uh, a full-time position from library and, and doing it, by the way, within the same cost that we budgeted this year, we're doing that and actually giving more time in, in the library uh, staff-wise at the same time, which is incredible. Uh, but it's allowing us then to start doing more original programming, which I think is something that, that again, we, we just, as we heard last night, we don't do enough to get the message out of what's going on. And, and that's going to be one of our tools going forward to get the message out of what's going on in town. Okay. Cool. Anyone else? Tom. One, one quick, okay. if I could, back on, on ETV. And, you know, I asked this of you, I know what the answer is going to be, but, you know, ratings of, of ETV, to know how many people are actually watching it so we can, you know, if, if so many people are watch, then I, I'd be more in favor of pouring more and more into it because it's, you know, I, there's not a, a commercial uh, television station that doesn't look at their ratings to see right. what we're doing and if we're if we're meeting the target audience's demands and uh, I, and I know that the cable companies won't allow that to us is there any way in the future to try to lobby them to let us have those numbers well you know uh, when when we started streaming and and actually putting a lot of our videos on YouTube which is awesome too I might add has, has actually given us an ability to get a little bit of that without, you know, begging uh, Cox to find out, you know, what, what potential viewership it is. Right. And, and I, Henry has all these numbers. I'm sure he's going to share them with council in his presentation on, on Saturday. <coughs> but, uh, you know, he does have the number of hits on the different videos that have been placed out on YouTube. And uh, unfortunately, council meetings are not in the top five. So, you know, I see that's underused too, uh, and maybe that's an advertising thing to get the word out to more people that that on your demand is, you know, YouTube, you can pick it up any time of the day you would like, and that's that's so much more convenient than waiting for it to come around on the loop, and, and, and maybe that's where the future is for us to, to get our word out, is in YouTube. Yeah, I think, again, looking at the generational, um, you know, different, different, you know, the older, you know, get up to our age. You know, I'm doing it though. I, I, I know, but, but you know, <laughs> once I, you find it, we're a little bit, yeah. you know, we're, I think, a little bit. You're right, slow on the back on that one. Absolutely. But, but you know, when you start looking at, you know, the teens and 20 somethings, and that hopefully we're going to be, you know, bringing it into our community, keeping it within our community, you know, those type of things are, are very important. I was reading the other day about, you know, the, the TV less, you know, households, and, and that's, that's, What's going to happen? You know, ten years right. from now, yeah, it's, there's only okay. maybe 15, 20 percent of the households with TVs, traditional TVs, right. connected to a video box. It's going to be, you know, YouTube. It's going to be, um, you know, other streaming type of things that people can watch on 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 their, you know, in their time whenever they want to do it. So yeah, the TVs are set for that now. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Go. And I'd like to see that more on more of our literature too. We watch us on YouTube also, or. You know, ETV, let people know what's out there uh, without those bugs and logos of Facebook or whatever we intend to do in the future everywhere. So, you, you, you know, even in those printings we just talked about, uh, the old, you know, the old yeah. way of doing things, we've got to put all the new, you know, bugs on it so people yep. see those, those icons and then move to it. Yep. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? I think 5% of the council meeting viewing is Joey watching himself talk on <laughs> TV. <laughs> Now, is the ratings that you say Henry's going to uh, give to us, not the ratings, but the views? Number of clicks, Because yeah. you, when you go to YouTube, you can actually see it, yeah. see it and we'll say, you know, oh, yeah. s watched by 25 people. Right. Or, yep. Now, is that a true number or is that someone that's watched it from start to finish? Or is it so that... It came back three times. Usually you click that. I, I think you know. it's one thousand. So... Yeah. It's not accurate. It's, it's only a hit, per se. Because actually, when you actually look, I was surprised that some aren't watched more than that they actually are, that that they're pretty low. And so you, you'll even get some of the Good News Enfield ones. Mm -hmm. So like the recycling one was very popular, and yep. people probably shared it and it moved around. But other ones, people don't know they're there, and maybe you know, 10, 15 people are, are viewing that, it. That's a key. You get the nail on the head. It's so it's. Made. It, it's how, how do you get the message out that it's like you got to promote the post to correct. get people to yeah. share the post and more people to watch the post. You don't say that it's there, <laughs> right? 
how do you know it's there? I think you there? Can, can't you put it, can't Paul stick it up on the website? You just have like the top three revolving ones to share? Yeah, and and that's actually, you know, something I left out with, with the addition of Maya or additional time for Maya that you know, we've talked about within the office is allowing us to be a little bit more into the social media. I mean, it, it's right now we kind of view that as a luxury, but we, we've been talking at length to try to develop a, a better strategy to reach out to people. And it's just, you know, to do it right, you have to be committed to doing it. If you don't have the amount of time necessary to do that, you just, it's never going to reach the level you want. So we're feeling that, you know, that's going to be an, an opportunity with her in the office to start doing a little bit more with the social media. But, but it, there's a greater strategy we have to talk about at some point or put together, you know, how to do a good communication with the residents and and it's just you know I, I remember back in the, the mid 90s as a manager you know it, it was funny everybody was talking about use of you know uh, governmental access channels as you know the way to communicate and uh, you know we come up now everybody's talking about the social media is the way to communicate yeah. so We're things have changed be 10 years in behind. 10 15 right right but uh, it, it is again when we look at the demographic that that you know, we want to keep and want to attract that 20 to 30 uh, year old. Uh, it's it's a different world. It's a different well, world for us. I think if you have, a, if we end up, get, if we end up to the world of, we have a Facebook page that is not one that people can actually respond to. Right. It's just out there and they can look at it. It's constantly pouring out pouring information. Pouring out information. Yep. Then you can do that and it'll work. Yes. But if you, until you do that, because we can't liability wise. Greg, you know, send it to Greg, Greg, put it on your wall, and then I put it on EIP's wall, and somebody else puts it on Angel Lee's channel. You can't do that. Right. Yeah, and that, that's, you know, why we've, we've stayed away from it, because there is a certain amount of danger associated yep. with doing those just, things. Just create a Facebook page that's out of them. Yeah, so and that's what we're looking to do. It doesn't require any maintenance or anything. Enjoy what we do. Go ahead, Greg. Uh, just to, uh, as far as the social media, the key thing with social media, is to uh, you have to continuously up print something out there a day. And there, exactly. it, I have a, a few pages uh, for the July celebration. I operate that page as administrator, and I can see um, how many hits. I can see I can see demographics of men, women, ages, and everything. On, mm -hmm. on I can check all that. And, but what happens is the more that you put out information, like for instance, as we get closer into May and June, and we've been daily we're putting something out. Then you begin to see the readership because what happens is the algorithms are designed to put it out to more people than, so it's, it's, it's an all system. But going back to the idea of the YouTube, we put out uh, the, the alerts of, you know, people sign up for an alert where they get you know, the meeting, the agenda, the minutes. If we could put a hyperlink say, saying that, uh, just you know, for information is that uh, selected most of our meetings or whatever meetings, meetings are, are put on YouTube and have the link, hyperlink, and you put a disclaimer, not all, town meetings are, are, are videotaped or whatever, but all those information about emails to all the people who signed up, that hyperlink will be there for them to hit, and that would be a great way for them to get off and pop on that, and they can watch a meeting. So that that would be the, probably a great way of marketing. That's a good idea. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Brad. <coughs> Anyone else? Town manager's budget. Motion. Okay. The last one is the town council budget. <coughs> I put in a hundred percent race for every life. Mm. Awesome. Zero and zero. zero, zero. 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 <laughs> what step am I? What step am I? I know Scott, you maxed out on steps. There's some of us that are still on steps, right? I want to give up right. my raise this year and give it to Ken Nelson. But I'm s I'd be so nice. I'd give you my step. Thank you, Mr. In Mayor. exchange for, for your step. I'd like the benefits to double. <laughs> Uh, what you see uh, <laughs> is that a, a vastly different uh, document that you normally see uh, as a proposal. We, we go back and we try to put in what looks like uh, reasonable travel costs. Um, the audit uh, this year, I think, is staying the same at 53.4, right? So there's no increase this year on that. Um, that's, that's the big the big uh, enchilada in your budget is that audit, so. Go ahead, Tom. Uh, we talked about it last year, and how did we end up this year with travel? I know CCM didn't have uh, the dollars it did the year before, but do we need 10000 for travel? Well, that's, you know, what I, I, I start at kind of what we always put in, so. 
And it usually, oh, okay. you guys usually cut that All at right. some point. So, so you don't have another reason in there that is not out of the ordinary or whatever. Right. Nope. Okay. Thank you. That's all I got. Greg? Just one thing I mentioned, too, is I remember last year, Deputy Mayor Nelson, because of a year that there is an election yep. in case some that new come on, uh, Ken has, has suggested that it might be good for those new coming on. I, it was a great experience for me to go last time, my first year, but they said they didn't want to rob of that experience to be a part of that uh, going to the uh, Washington, D.C. Right. So. Good point, because it yep. is an election year. Right. So yep. There'll be a lot of new Republicans up here. <laughs> Why, where are you going? <laughs> no. <laughs> and, and just to let you know, we what we have here, we budgeted, uh, should I just collect this? We, we budget for a certain amount of people to travel to that. Um, again, it's, it's only a guess, but on the travel expenses, uh, we, we put in the cost for four uh, council members to go to D.C. on that one. Mm -hmm. And again, if you really look at that's kind of what the average that uh -huh. tends to be. So. Tom? And we do joke, we get no compensation, no stipends, nothing. <laughs> yes. So no one gets yeah. a wrong idea <laughs> out there. Wrong there idea. Is, uh, <laughs> this is totally uh, for the love of it. Okay. Matt, one question um, on, on your uh, printing. How, how are we doing from, it wouldn't show it on from the iPads to today. I don't think it, show, it goes back far enough now. Yeah, no. Um, you know, I was I was thinking about putting those numbers together to see what last year versus this year is, but I I, I would guarantee you that we are purchasing less paper today than what we were before the iPads and, and the use of the computers. Great. Um, I mean, there's no doubt about that, and I think staff time related to it is devoted a lot less as well. Got it. Definitely. Okay. Thank you, Matt. Okay. Anyone else? Town Council budget. Okay. <coughs> Motion to adjourn. That's it. There's no need to go into executive session. None. Before we adjourn, so everyone knows, so Saturday we have our budget we have our budget meeting. Nine AM. Nine AM here in the Enfield room. Projected to go to about three three thirty. Yep. So nine Breakfast and lunch served, I heard. Yes. Yes. One thing, Scott, I gotta say I will not be able to attend. I had made an earlier commitment with my grandchildren on Saturday, taking them up to Boston for the opening of Daniel Hall. They have the street performers out there, so I'm I'm sorry, I'm I'm really can I I'd like to apologize now to the department heads that are here. Um, I uh, You'll be able to catch it on YouTube. I will definitely. I promise <laughs> I will catch it on send, YouTube. Send us an email, Tom, and we'll say whatever you want us to say. Okay, and, and you can actually look on Facebook, and I will mark myself at Daniel Hall so you know I'm not kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're for. Okay. We know some folks won't be able to make it, so. Yeah. With that being said. Motion to adjourn. By Cindy, seconded by Tom. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, we are yeah. adjourned. Good you're evening. A wizard.